A little while ago, we were having a discussion at the NES Dev Forums about whether the Super Nintendo could do palette cycling art. And the short answer is yes. And I'll come back to that in a bit. Um, but first, I want to explain what we're looking at. So this website is a recreation of some palette cycling art made by Mark Ferrari. Um, it was a set of art called Living Worlds, and it was for this day planner application called Seize the Day um, for Windows 3.1 in the mid 90s. And it was made for the emerging Super VGA standard of 640 by 480 with 256 colors. And the thing that's especially different about that kind of video mode than what we use today um, is the palette. Instead of each pixel having a unique red, green, blue value, it just had one number, which was an index to look up a color in the palette. So here we have a palette of 200, 256 colors, and we can just like highlight um, any of them to see where that palette is used. I guess it colors it black in this uh, simulation here. So this is a an HTML5 JavaScript simulation by Joseph Huckabee, um, which does it reasonably efficiently. Um, like despite the fact that we don't really have graphics hardware that does palettes anymore, I mean it does a little bit, but for the most part we don't use it. So on a website to do this effectively, um, he needed to come up with kind of a clever programming solution. And um, so this, this website is pretty interesting, but it, it also recreates this art um, and kind of shows people um, this, this is basically the, the gold standard of palette cycling art. Like this is, I think, the, the best it was ever done. Um, and it's just a great demonstration of how it worked. So the advantage of palettes, because um, he was making a like a day planner, he wanted it to change throughout the day and he could just change the colors. So if you watch on the right, you can see the, all the tones of the palette are changing. Um, but we see like the, the dark windows become um, lit at nighttime. And then you can watch the shading kind of progress along the falls in the morning. And then the idea of like the sun going across the sky and the, the direction of the shading changes. So he could do all of these by um, blending between different palette sets, but the underlying bitmap image doesn't change. Like nothing has to change in terms of this data. It's one byte per pixel, and it just tells you what color in the palette to use. Um, so that's kind of the advantage of palette. So it's like a, mo a more compact representation, but it's also efficient for certain kinds of things. And this is actually, harder to do on like modern hardware where you have unique colors like you have to you don't have a way to select i just want to change the colors in like a certain range of pixels like if we just wanted to change the sky we we could change like these palette colors um and probably like for the evening he's got you know here we have a sort of gradient from pink to uh, like a more orangish but um it's hard to do that kind of thing in directly in RGB. Like you'd have to kind of come up with a mask to select this area of the screen and kind of tint the colors programmatically. But here we can just, he could, he could make an image, choose the palette and then make another palette set. And then we can just gradually blend between them. Um, so it's, it's, it was a really interesting application of that. Um, but, the, but the other thing we wanted to look at, or the, maybe the more important thing for this demonstration, palette cycling. Um, so we can see these animated waterfalls. Let me slow this down. Um, so what happens is you define a range of colors and you draw with that kind of palette gradient. And what happens is you have this rotation. 
So every group of colors goes through a cycle where the, it just moves them all to the right and then moves the one at the end to the start. Um, so they're going around and around in a circle and each step um, makes the colors progress along that that gradient, not a gradient of color, but a gradient of palette indexes. So you, you draw with, um, let's see if we can find the, the top of, this is a really complicated <laughs> layered example. Actually, uh, Mark Ferrari did a really neat video uh, where he was talking about how he made this kind of stuff, and but also um, it's called Thimbleweed Park, which he was working on at the time. It's from a couple of years ago, I think at GDC. Um, I'll link that as well in the description and a link to this website. But anyhow, so I, I'm trying to demonstrate each step is like, these are the steps in the gradient and you can see how they kind of move down the waterfall. And when they're animated, you see those colors moving down in space by cycling through them through the palette. Um, so that's basically how palette cycling works. Um, and so the question is for Super NES, um, like th this kind of palette hardware, Super NES has palettes. Um, you may, and Super NES has video modes. The, the normal modes have 16 color palettes. It has a bunch of them, but they're, they're all kind of just 16 colors. Um, but there is a mode with 256 colors. So you've probably heard of mode seven, like there's actually eight Super NES modes. Um, but mode three has 256 colors and it's not as high resolution as this. It's not 640 by 480, but it's just 256 by, uh, 224. So it's still 256 colors, but it's a lower resolution. Um, but that meant if I wanted to, to put this art on super NES, all I have to do is cut a lower resolution part of it out of the middle, I guess. And so I did that and I made a ROM. Um, that kind of demonstrated exactly, well, it just ran the art <laughs> in 256 colors like it's designed to do. And that worked really well. And I, I, I actually put like the whole set of the uh, Living Worlds art in here. Unfortunately, I can't share this ROM because it's, um, you know, it's copyrighted art. Um, Hoping like using it in this video isn't isn't too bad. It's just sort of demonstrating it, but I can't really do that. But each of these images is um, 64 kilobytes, and um, all of this fits in a four megabyte ROM. So there's enough space in a Super Nintendo ROM to store a bunch of these images. And if you wanted to make a game like this, you actually could. And it's kind of like what you'd have to work with, um, you know, like older games for DOS. VGA mode 13H was 320 by 200, kind of similar resolution, but with 256 colors. And you did see palette cycling stuff like this on that. And you, you even saw palette cycling on um, like Amiga or Atari ST, um, where it only had 16 or 32 colors. Um, but it just really shines when you have 256 to work with. It's just like, it gives you enough. And actually I should show you, um, let me open the palette viewer here. So we can see the same colors that we could see in the, um, the website version and how they're animated. So, that all works. It works on Super NES and it works for the images. And the other thing I can show you is the tile um, or the, the underlying map. Let me just set this up here. So what we're looking at here is we have a grayscale image, um, which, is, which is just the pixel indexes. So like black would, would map to this color and then like this color at the end would be like pure white. So, um, 
that sort of gives you a view of what the actual image data looks like. And it's, it's very similar. Um, I mean, the bits are packed differently on the Super NES, but it's the same idea, 8-bit palette index, 256 colors, and it's just a lower resolution. So I can't really share this, but I, you know, I wanted to show people how this was done. I wanted to make it open source. Um, so I made an alternative demo and I didn't feel up to like, you know, spending months of my life trying to you know, draw interesting landscapes and stuff like that in, in that style. And I don't think I could do it as good as Mark Ferrari did it, but I thought maybe for the purposes of a, a demonstration, I could make some uh, program generated art. So that's what I did instead. So I made this demo ROM with a couple of kind of interesting images. Um, so this first one is um, kind of derived from an old program called Noah's Acid Warp, which did these kind of like plasma effects with palette cycling on DOS. Um, it was just a fun program to run and you could just like watch it running on your monitor and it would generate images like this and palette cycle them and it would just like continually refresh kind of a screensaver idea um, before we had multitasking and needed a screensaver to interrupt what you're doing when you walked away. But um, here on the right we can see the indexed image. And then on the left, you can see the, um, like the, sorry, the, the image as it, it, as the palette is applied. And in the middle, we have the palettes. Um, so there's an upper range here, which is cycling. We got yellow and green and magenta and gray, and that's applying to kind of this area of the image. And I sort of drew in the background, um, a different kind of plasma effect, and I applied just these colors to it. So I have two different color ranges that are cycling, like we have this lower rainbow range, and we have this uh, larger, um, more monochromatic, slowly changing range, and they just kind of overlay like that. And it produces this effect. Um, and the nice thing about palette cycling is like it doesn't use any, or hardly any, um, CPU power. Like all you have to do is move a few colors around in memory and then just re-upload those to the, the GPU each frame. So just by updating the colors, we get this kind of animated effect. Uh, so my second demonstration, I made a maze and you sort of have these worms crawling through the maze um, by means of a palette animation. Um, so a maze is pretty easy, easy to generate for a programmer. Um, it tends to be kind of like a beginner activity to learn how to generate a maze, like one of those common learning things. Um, and what we did, what I did here is you can see in the, uh, the grayscale version, um, the paths, go kind of from dark to light and then start at dark and then go to light again. And that's basically showing the, um, the palette gradient. Um, I reserved, I think 126 colors for the red one. And I've just set them all to gray most of the time, except for a little slice of red, which I'm moving along it. And I have this, uh, blue one representing the wrong path. Um, which I animate in the same way. And that let me just draw a gradient of like the correct path to go through the maze um, right in the art. So again, like the, the source image is never changing. We're just changing the color palette. And from that, we're able to see this animated maze walking worm, whatever you want to call it. Um, this third image is similar to the um, the acid warp example. This is inspired by a program called Maelstrom. 
which is another DOS kind of palette cycling generated art program. Um, but the effect here, we have a, we treat the palette as a 2D grid. Um, so we have a gradient from, I guess I've gone from um, black to orange and then blue to white or something like that. There's, there's basically two dimensions um, here and the image is generated so that um, emanating up from, from the points, there's sort of these um, concentric, well, they're not circles, but um, these kind of, so moving vertically, we have these circles emanating out from the points. And then horizontally, we have these kind of angular lines. So but moving horizontally, we have the horizontal gradient, and moving vertically, we have the vertical gradient. And by animating the palette in two dimensions at once, um, we can make both of those kind of animate at the same time. And as you can see, the underlying image, um, you can't really see the angles just because of the, the way the horizontal gradient doesn't really pick up in the grayscale view here, but it's part of the image. Um, and then this next one is a higher resolution maze. Um, you can kind of see that, so the yellow ones are the correct path. You'll see it starts down here, um, but after about 10 seconds or so, it'll reach a point where a new one starts. There it goes. It starts again in the bottom left corner. So that's the limitation of the, the length of the palette. Like your animation can only be as long as the width of, or the amount of colors you have in your palette. And for that reason, you, you have so much more to work with with 256 colors than you do um, with 16 colors. Um, like you usually get in other modes on the Super Nintendo. Um, here again, a, a, another kind of acid warp derived thing. In the background, I have um, this white and uh, gray and blue. Um, cycling here. And then on top of it, I have this green and magenta kind of plasma idea. Plasmas are just um, basically like a sine wave with some transformations on it to kind of stretch it and move it around the screen. Um, and then you get something that basically has waves, but like pattern in some way. So in this case, they're kind of emanating out from uh, sort of a trio of points in the middle. And then, oh yeah, so I was also demonstrating that you could just draw um, like a color gradient. So I have this rainbow gradient that's animating on its own and that sort of follows the arrow, arrows. And you don't have to animate everything. Like here's a static part of the palette and I use that just for this um, little overlay here. But again, you know, this is all just one image. The image data is not changing, only the colors. Oh, and this is, um, this is basically the Maelstrom idea again, uh, with the 2D palette being animated. Um, but it looks a bit different. So I use, I use basically the same code to generate this base image, um, where it has a horizontal gradient and it has a vertical gradient. You can't see the vertical in the in the grayscale version, but it, it's there. Um, you can see it in the image though. And this ends up, um, because of what I've done, it, you can, because it's a 16 by 16 palette, like 256 colors can be arranged in a grid, 16 by 16. And so I just put a 16 by 16 image on it and I animate scrolling that image around within that kind of 16 by 16 palette. Um, and so it ends up looking like kind of a 3D image transformation somehow, uh, like a texture mapping thing, which I guess it kind of is. Like that's basically what it's doing. Um, but again, we're not doing any 3D math. Like we generated this whole image offline and it's not moving. The only thing that's moving is the palette. 
And in this one, I, I cut out a corner of the screen just to draw the gradient by itself, just to show you what the palette looks like. You know, if you run this on your Super Nintendo, you wouldn't, you won't see the stuff in the debugger like this. You would just see this on the screen. So I wanted to kind of show the palette just in that kind of overlay box there. Uh, and this is the last one. This is just the, the highest resolution maze. And it looks pretty dense. Um, this is actually kind of hard to see on a real Super NES, unless maybe you're, you've got it RGB modded, but um, like just the density of the, of the pixels, um, they tend to get a little bit blurred. Actually here, we can add a, a filter that kind of shows you how it's a little bit hard to see. I think it's even worse on my actual Super Nintendo. Um, there's like ringing artifacts that make it the lines look really thin. Um, but again, like it, it looks very complicated. Like it's very detailed looking animation of all these little worm creatures crawling all over the maze. Um, but we're not animating them as sprites or anything like that. We're not keeping track of them. We just have this image in memory and the colors are taking care of making them move because of how we've arranged them. So that's basically it. That's my um, palette cycling demonstration for the Super Nintendo. Um, it's a bit of an unusual effect. This mode, the 8-bit color, the 256 um, color mode was not used very often on the Super Nintendo. So there's some drawbacks to it. These take up a lot of pixels usually. With 16 colors, it takes up half the memory to, well, not exactly half the memory. So there's some other <laughs> things that add on to it. But um, with, with um, 16 colors, you get trade-offs that you can put more stuff. You can have layers. Um, like this mode, you can have, you can have a simple layer on top of this, but not like a fully colored layer, like a, a four color layer. And then with other modes, you might have like multiple 16 color layers. And um, actually I could show an example. Um, hang on, let me bring up, here's Secret of Mana. I think I've got a save state. Here we go. So Secret of Mana here, we can see um, oh, this isn't, uh, let me set this to 16 color mode. Maybe it'd be better to show it in the, um, yeah, maybe we can see it through there. Okay. So it's harder to see because it's, <laughs> it's a little bit, um, I don't know which one's the best one to show because they're all kind of overlapping and that palette animation is so uh, affecting everything it's kind of jarring for the eyes but anyhow uh, so here's Secret of Mana and you can see it's using a little bit of palette cycling so it's not just 16 colors it's you have 16 palettes of 16 colors so it, it, every mode has 256 colors available but uh, you can't use all of them everywhere on the screen um, and so this is mode one, the most common Super Nintendo mode. I should probably make a video about Super Mana specifically because it's uh, it's got a very interesting rendering, rendering technique, but I'll talk about that in a later video, I think. Um, what I'm showing here is just, you have this layer of waterfall, um, which has, you know, a palette cycling animation. I guess this is just eight colors. And then you have the like the twinkling of the water, which is like another five color animation. Um, so this is doing palette cycling effects. They were done on the Super Nintendo, just not nearly to the same uh, extent. I, I guess they weren't really that common on e even on DOS games. Like you could do it, but like not a lot of people um, really took uh, um, a zeal to the the problem of making palletized animations like Mark Ferrari did with his 
with those wonderful examples we were looking at earlier, but um, it works and it's a pretty neat, neat technique. Um, anyway, I've probably rambled long enough on this for now. Uh, if you want to look at my palette cycling demo, it's on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description. Like usual, you can look at it. You can play with the Python script. Uh, if you can generate a 256 color palette image, um, you can just use the script to rebuild it. It's basically just a gallery program. Like you just press a button to cycle through the images. Um, but um, yeah, you can rebuild it with whatever art you want to try on it. Making art like this um, is not easy and there's not a lot of tools to be found these days. Uh, like Mark Ferrari worked with a program called dpaint, which you can still run in DOSBox. Um, but there aren't too many tools that are, are good for drawing palletized art these days. Um, it's a bit of a lost art, but it's an interesting one. Um, if you want to play with it, all the, all the code's there. Um, so you just provide it with the art and tell the Python script, you know, my color ranges start at color 10 and go to color 30 and animate at the speed or whatever. Um, and you just rebuild it with whatever art you want. Um, and also it has the, the programs for generating like the maze and the plasma, if you're curious about how those were generated as well. Um, so that's all there if you want to play with it. Um, so I hope this has been interesting. Uh, I just really wanted to see, like after the discussion, like the question was like, could Super Nintendo do this? And like, to me, the obvious answer is yes. Like it has the, uh, has the, the graphics capability to do it. It just wasn't used very often. Um, for a couple of reasons, but stuff like this, if you have the skills and time to draw a nice palette animated art like this, it can do it. And I just wanted to see it. So that's why I built this. Um, all right. So till next time, um, check out the, the ROM and the program in the description and, uh, thanks for listening.